Who's ready for another Gamer Edition? God, I feel insulted just saying that. Hello there! If this is your first time on this channel, first of all, welcome, and allow me to introduce myself. My name is Lane, as in wrote, you getting tired of that joke yet? I'm a man-child who dedicates his time to playing with toys in front of a camera and talking about things I like. I started this channel around two years ago after high school, and I've enjoyed my time here. Anyways, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series Gamer Edition Megatron. This is a figure I have been looking forward to because I genuinely love the War for Cybertron design and I knew I'd either love the figure or get to tear it a new stand port. But looking at the figure, the painting and sculpting is pretty good. This is a figure that I know has divided some people. Some love it, some hate it, I'm in the group that generally likes it. For the most part, the figure looks very game accurate, capturing everything down to the pencil waist. I love the colors here, especially when compared to the old Deluxe, that white looked ugly and you can't tell me otherwise. And while we are comparing the two purely through pictures, as I don't have the old one, the new one seems far more game accurate aside from the lack of back detail. Not that what's here is bad or even ugly, in fact it's very clean, just not game accurate. Only reason I bring that up is because the back is what you saw most of the time in the game, and the old figure made the effort to include it. And while we're on accuracy, I've also heard that the new one is accurate to the DS game? I don't know. But this figure nails most of the proportions, yes, even the narrow shoulders, and does, a f and does so fairly cleanly with the only real kibble being these leg treads. Only thing that's really misproportioned is the head, which I feel is slightly too small. And while we're here, we might as well bring out the old one, because I have been hearing that it is supposedly 100 times better. I kind of agree. The old one says fuck game accuracy in favor of something more simplistic, whereas the new one aims to capture the detail of the game and does so really well. You can even see that pouty Megatron expression sculpted in. And it's all painted very nicely, though I do feel the figure as a whole definitely needed more to pick out some of these black and purple details and the grey top knee spikes. But at least the red on these really cool looking asymmetrical arms are there and really helps to enhance the overall design, though it unfortunately doesn't make up for the cannon. The thing looks way too small and lacks any detail, like my dick. It also feels almost disconnected from the arm. What I'm trying to say is the port makes the cannon stick too far out. But hey, if you need, you can absolutely pop off the forearm and have this look going on. Follow Cybertron Megs, anyone? And the same 5mm port is used on the front, making it effect part compatible. While we're here, if you're wondering, yes, the Neutron Assault Rifle does look completely awkward on this figure. But hey, while we're here, we might as well bring up the figure's other accessories, which include this mace that comes packaged in two parts, peg them together, and you get this really awesome and super imposing weapon. The overall design isn't 100% accurate, but the awkward, unpainted lower spikes actually are. Too bad his real right elbow can't hold it. We'll get to that. He also can store it on his back. Epic. And lastly, it is effect part compatible for some reason. Being a Studio Series figure, we also have to mention the backdrop. Found in the box, of course, and this one I actually find really cool. It's a screenshot from the first mission in the game, Starscream Space Station. Looks really good and once again shows just how awesome these games looked. With that, we return to that loose elbow, which I do wonder if it comes from the narrower hinge thanks to the gimmick. I don't know, but I am happy to report that the rest of this figure's joints are very nice and sturdy, making the figure feel excellent to pose. Ball joint at the head that allows for a rotation can also be extended to allow some good upward and downward movement. Rotation at the shoulder that's oddly clicky on the left arm. Left shoulder spikes are on their own little joint to allow for full outward. Really annoying shoulder piece wiggle. Bicep swivel, a pretty full elbow bend that can be made deeper with this transformation joint. Nothing at the wrist. Waist swivel, hips can kick forward very far and back, also very far. Can do the full splits both ways. Above the knee swivel. A slightly above 90 degree bend at the hump. For some bizarre reason that not even Primus knows, the brilliant engineers at Haztec decided to add a tab on the goddamn knee joint. Oh well, it's probably for transformation, right? No. I have looked time and time again, and there seems to be no, absolutely no use for this piece of plastic whatsoever. It seems to only exist on everyone's copies just to fuck you over. But fortunately, if you have a pair of cutters and a hobby knife, you can cut and shave down the tab to get that full knee bend. 
And just like the tab itself, this process affects nothing aside from the knee bend. Awesome. Ankle can move up and down and it's got a decent pivot. This rear panel can also move to help with balance. And lastly, if you need it, you can move the toe downward. Articulation on this guy is actually great. Only thing I really want is a wrist joint, but aside from that you get all the standard joints, but also some pretty insane ranges. And once you fix that knee, a whole new world of poses opens up. He's really fun to handle, and the durable paint makes sure you're not going to ruin the figure's good looks. And with a combination of strong joints, a solid standing foundation, and a great hand feel, the experience is very pleasant. He is even balanced enough to stand on one foot. While he may have the build quality though, he does not have the size of a Voyager Megatron standing at only six and a quarter inches tall. In other words, size comparison time. Here he is with Earthrise Optimus Prime, Studio Series 86 Hot Rod, Gamer Edition Barricade, Origin Bumblebee, Studio Series 86 Grimlock, Premium Finish Megatron, Igus Statue, and this mug. As intimidating as this guy looks, he almost loses all of that it the second you put him next to other figures, most notably other Primes and Megatrons. Even Barricade is pretty sizable next to him. And looking at pictures, I also found that this Voyager is also only slightly taller than the old Deluxe. Damn. I understand that this guy is around the same height as Gamer Prime, but he doesn't have that build, and frankly, I just wish they would have made this figure both taller and bulky. But I'm ranting now and we haven't even gotten to these instructions! That even show that there shouldn't be a knee tab. And here we have Megatron in his hover tank mode, and it looks awesome. The transformation to get here was super fun and satisfying. Just make sure you get that middle tab clicked in and the final results is worth it. Unlike the robot mode, the cannon actually looks really good here. So that's why it's missing the back end. The only real new part is this front section under the tank barrel. Even has some purple highlights. And speaking of, I love the colors once again, especially this gunmetal grey on the front. However, once again, more paint was definitely needed. Additionally, I find the shape of the mode really interesting and kind of cool. But let's be honest, it's a Cybertronian vehicle, meaning that as long as it looks like something, it's acceptable. Though to give credit where it's due, they did follow the game's design well. Now, I know that there are many that wish the treads could have moved down to make the driving mode like the old toy, however, that is actually accurate to the game. As shown here, there is absolutely no instance where the tank touches the ground, even when in, like, speed mode. Besides, even if it did have a driving mode, it probably wouldn't even touch the ground anyway thanks to the underside kibble. It's a fairly messy underside, but at the end of the day, who cares? I don't, but what I do care about is how this mode feels, and yeah, it's pretty good. Everything, especially those middle clips, tabs in very securely, and the previously mentioned plastic quality makes this guy surprisingly satisfying to hold. And since this is Hasbro, the rear spikes are rounded off, making this mode safe to handle. If a third party made this, those knee spikes would be sharp enough to pierce a person's jugular. The tank barrel is fixed in place which prevents it from rotating, however that's also accurate to the game. He doesn't have any sort of wheels so he doesn't really roll, but hey, he does slide. Though of course this is a hover tank, so, and as you'd expect there isn't a stand port to assist here. Mace can store on the top and looks dumb as always. I mean, you can stick it in the tank's cavity right here and get this look. Sure, I ain't judging. Size wise the tank actually still feels small. Damn. Here he is with Prime, Hot Rod, Barricade, Bumblebee, Grimlock, Megatron, I guess, and Mug. Overall, this is a pretty good figure. I love this design for Megatron, and even preferring it to the Fall of Cybertron design, and I think this figure did a generally good job of replicating it. 
It feels great in hand, making posing a joy, and the figure is just super fun to flip back and forth between modes. However, the lack of paint, certain details, and a few poor decisions really holds this guy back, most notably the cannon design and those random tabs on the knees. Though the absolute worst thing about this guy is definitely the size. He, he's barely bigger than an old deluxe, hell, even a taller modern deluxe. This makes me think that perhaps these Gamer Edition figures are getting the short end of the stick in regards to budget. While I still am looking forward to more from this line and picking up the Autobot characters, I can't help but feel that these have been a step down from the reboot movie and G1 86 stuff. And I know I'm not the only one who loves these games, so I really hope Hasbro can step it up soon. But in regards to a recommendation, I still think this figure is worth a pickup, but only on sale. His size, weight, and weapons don't really fit that $47 price tag. Jesus Christ, is that how much I paid? For that price, I could get this.